Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew's gospel from chapter 15, and it's verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I thought, after this morning's Bible study at 9 o'clock, that I would just invite the folks who attended to come up here and we'd have the microphone and they could kind of share and what they would share would be a sermon because they, it was just a wonderful time of wrestling with, listening to what emerged from this passage from Matthew's Gospel. Um, but I don't know that they would all rush right up front to share with you, so... <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> Loving Creator God, as we study your holy word through this story in Matthew's gospel, guide our understanding. May the meditations of our hearts and minds and the words I share this day be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Jesus is not very subtle. First, he ignores the Canaanite woman shouting at him for help. Then he clearly states, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is in his attempts to get this Canaanite woman, who was also referenced as a Syrophoenician Gentile woman in the parallel passage in Mark's Gospel, but in his attempts to get her to leave them alone. This story can be troubling to some people because Jesus doesn't seem very loving. Jesus doesn't seem to care about this woman or her daughter. If we look at what had trans, uh, transpired previously, we know that Jesus had been arguing with the Pharisees and scribes from Jerusalem. They were at odds, once again, about following the laws. He had just finished teaching the crowds who had been listening to this conflict. Jesus and his disciples were likely quite weary as they headed off on their journey to the next place where Jesus would continue his teaching. Then this woman approaches, accosting Jesus with her shouts. Was Jesus actually insulting her, hoping she would give up and slink away in shame when he compared her as a Gentile woman to a dog? lower and less worthy than even a child? In the culture of the time, there was a hierarchy in society that was reflected in the household. Men were at the top, then women, then children, and then the dogs and other animals. I was reminded of a trip that was sponsored by Heifer International when I traveled to Hunan province in southwest China. And there we visited the villages of several ethnic minority groups who lived in rural areas way up in the uh, mountains. Their village homes were constructed in an open fashion, and the cooking of their meals, as well as eating, was often done outside or either in an alcoved area that was very near to the front of the homes and was open to the outside. The hierarchy there in contemporary rural China was similar to that of the Israelites. It was a patriarchal society. The women worked in the household as well as in the fields or elsewhere to support the family. 
And the men worked outside the home, often traveling far away to other uh, towns or cities during the week. And while they were at home, they seemed to do little to help out. And in contrast to how we care for our pets, with bowls for water and food, providing them with a regular meal or meals, and shelter, nice, soft, comfortable beds. In China, the dogs and the cats also roamed freely, moving about the village. If there were any scraps or unused parts left from the meal preparation or after eating, these might, might have been fed either to the pigs, if there were some, or thrown to the dogs. The dogs had learned to wait until after the people had finished, mainly to avoid being kicked or th something thrown at them. And then they scavenged for any dropped bits or crumbs of food where the family had eaten. These scavenged leftovers were how the dogs survived. These images came to mind as I read Matthew's passage. Life for the dogs in Jesus' time was a life of scavenging to survive. And the Canaanite woman knew this. We don't know much about this woman, but we do know she was a mother of a daughter, a girl child who was less valued by society than a male child. We don't know whether she had a husband, any other children, or how she came to know about Jesus. But we do know she was advocating for her daughter. She wanted Jesus' healing for her daughter. Our societies, while varying around the world, all have hierarchies and have social constructs of certain role-based expectations centered on being male versus female, and particular gender-based characteristics of how women and men, let alone any other understandings of gender, should be and how they should behave. We could generalize and extrapolate based on our understanding of the culture in Jesus' time. We might have expected this Canaanite woman to be a dedicated, loving, nurturing mother, to be in the home taking care of the household, committed to her family, and likely a gentle, quiet, and subservient person acquiescing to the traditions of society. Instead, we are confronted in Matthew's Gospel with this Canaanite woman who is loud, bold, improper, persistent, courageous, committed, quick-witted, with a strong belief, and yet is humble. Some would describe her as having chutzpah. What have we to learn from this woman and from Jesus' response to her? What in the Canaanite woman touched Jesus' well of compassion? What we can learn from this woman in Matthew's Gospel is what we can learn from many women in our lives who serve as models for all of us today. This unnamed woman was strong and stood up for what was important to her, against tradition, for what she believed in and hoped for. She was willing to ruffle some feathers as she was proactive, in this instance, on behalf of her daughter. She knew when to seek help, and she was humble. She had heard about this Jesus person, who so many of the Israelites were talking about, and she had started to listen. She had heard he had healing powers, and she believed and had nothing to lose. So she approached this Jewish man called Jesus, and Jesus responded to her, to her reaching out, to her persistence, her need, and her belief that he would respond. To her, the least of these, the Gentiles, who were less important than any child or creature in the house of the Israelites. This is the good news 
that Jesus responds to all. Jesus came for each and every one of us, regardless of our heritage, understandings, beliefs, status in society, or anything else. Jesus is here for us. God sent Jesus to us, for us, to help us understand and connect with God's self. But sadly, there is much that is unchanged since Jesus' time. Patriarchy is alive and well in many countries and cultures around the world, including the U.S. It continues to promote injustice and inequality in many ways. People continue to be ill, physically, mentally, and spiritually, and are in need of healing. There are still daughters and sons who need both mothers and fathers to advocate for them in many ways. Jesus assured us that the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom God sent in Jesus' name, will be with us to teach us and remind us of what Jesus said. And just as Jesus' perspective broadened and changed as illustrated in this passage from Matthew's Gospel, our United Methodist Church has perspectives that need to be broadened and changed. As a denomination, we are not unified nor welcoming in many ways. The conflict over full inclusion of GLBTQI individuals continues. The recent news that two amendments to our Constitution that were approved at the 2016 General Conference and then were sent to the annual conferences around the world for voting were not approved. These amendments had to do with seeking to eliminate discrimination against women and girls and equality based on gender, among other characteristics including ability, age, and marital status. Our denomination is not fully welcoming of all persons who are created in the image of God. In many areas of the country and world, and including some areas in New Jersey, female clergy are even not welcomed and accepted. I was struck by a recent Facebook posting by Heather Elkins, a United Methodist clergy and one of my professors at Drew's Theological School. Heather described her experience of her first Sunday serving in a church where she had a very mixed reception, to put it mildly. This is her recollection. After the service, a silver-haired senior, a woman who wears authority with style, takes my hand at the church door. Jesus didn't call women to be his disciples, dear. Heather took a deep breath, wanting to step back from the gut punch, but the woman still holding on. And then she smiles and says, he didn't have to, they volunteered. The Canaanite woman in Matthew's Gospel volunteered to be a disciple of Jesus, courageously stepping forward in her faith even when and where she wasn't invited. Let us be courageous and as disciples of Jesus, be welcoming to all. When some of our UMC brothers and sisters say about others, send them away for they keep bothering us and they are not worthy. Let us be bold and challenge the status quo as the Canaanite woman did. Let us welcome those others, and as did Jesus say, great is your faith, let it be done for you as you wish. Amen.